Welcome back, travelers, to Legendary Lore. I'm Ricky, and this is the excellent elf on my shelf, Joe. Say hi, Joe. I see you when you're sleeping. And he knows that I'm awake. He knows that I've been naughty. So, basically, we're going to be talking about Tyvar. <laughs> Tyvar and Kaya, to be exact, as they go into the demon's realm. So... That what? sounds like a terrible spell with Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes into the demon's realm? No, Tyvar and Kaya. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that one. That's a little bit more sense. So the thing is, they they show up and they land in the they land in Immerstrom. And Tyvar's like, we made it! I didn't think we could. And she's like, what? And it's because the gods sealed away uh, Immerstrom. They had basically put a ward around it so that particular realm no one could go to because Varagoth, who was the demon who had uh, corrupted the, the um the the black faction in bredegard he had been sealed away here and so is that a card which one Varagoth. yes Varagoth is a two three rogue demon for three that when he attacks he can boast he has death touch by the way when he boasts you get to basically vampiric tutor um for two mana so it's not a vampiric tutor but you, it's the same effect you don't lose the life either once again, that's not insane. Really. That's really good. No, yeah, he's a good tutor. Um, he's a demonic tutor uh, that does not demonic tutor. <gasps> um, the point being, they're in basically hell at this point. Uh, it's not meant for. Uh, not no one's meant to be here. And so you have Kaya and you have Tyvar, and the two of them are basically trying to uh, work their way. Uh, across these uh, the magma, and Tyvar's creating this like bridges out of the stone by co rapidly cooling the magma, and they just go across. Um, so Kai is kind so of nobody that dies goes to Immerstrom. No, you don't go to Immerstrom if you die. Um, you just go to the boring spirit place, even yes, if you're bad. Exactly. Um, in the uh, like the, in the traditional Norse mythology, you either went uh, to the realm of hell. H E L, which was um, which is like the realm of the dead. It's basically Istfel. Everything's real boring, and the god the the god there is like me the whole time. Or you go to Valhalla, and it was like yeah, cool all the time anyway. So like it's, it's so there's no torture. You either get really boring, or you get an awesome party eternally. Exactly. It's it's a, those are the way the two different possibilities. Okay. Um, so. Kai is re recognizing that Tyvar can his special ability is transmuting things, and so she's talking to him, and he's like, "So the, the planes, are, they're like the realms, and there's an even bigger world tree connecting all of those. Is that what? I'm, is that how this works?" And she's like, "Well, no, and there's there's not really any giant animals in between spaces, as far as she knew." She's uh, lying. <laughs> well, it's funny because it actually says it here. She goes. With, uh, well, yes, without the literal branches and no giant animals in the spaces between. And it says, at least as far as she knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, like, maybe there could be some Ur dragons or Eldrazi, but she doesn't know what those are, so it doesn't really matter. Um, She's never had to deal with Eldrazi. I hope we have Kaya next time we deal with an Eldrazi. I can see Kaya being on Innistrad because it would make sense. Uh, I am looking for seeing. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's there. Sword wouldn't be there. That is a you very good the, point. They would come. Can't have the two black whites. Unless they had a dual card, kind of like um, like they had to work together for some reason. The point is, let's get back to this story. <laughs> um, so he's like, Tyver's like, being a planeswalker is cool and all, but I don't really want to. He's like, there's just glory aplenty in Caltane. Like, yeah, I could go somewhere else, but why would I do that when I have my home? This is the, the ten realms are where I prefer to be. I'm the and, champion of the elves. And he's like, besides, if no one else is able to tell the stories, no one can pass these stories on, what's, the, what's even the point? I'd have to start basically fresh every time. No one would know who I was. And so she's like, yeah, well, that that is kind of a... She's thinking to herself, that's kind of the hard part. No one knows who you are. You're always a stranger. You're always having to learn what's going on. You always get dragged into other people's squabbles or wars. It's exhausting. Which, I mean, you can imagine that. 
And so she's trying to explain to him how it works. And she's saying, like, if you, when you be, because you will want to become a planeswalker, you need to set up a code. And Kai is like, my code? Do no harm. Unless they had a coming or someone's paying you. <laughs> and so she's trying to instill in Tyvar, like, hey, you, if you're going to be doing this thing, you need to not be, you, you need to make sure you're the good guy. You don't want to be the bad guy. And he says, I have a code, the same one passed down by the wars of Skemfar for untold generations. I am in no need of a stranger's schooling on such things. And she's like, I'm, I'm, okay, calm down. <laughs> There's literally demons everywhere. You don't need to fight me. She and goes, so, you, don't need to be, you don't want to be the bad guy. We take their names and send them to prison. Yep. <laughs> so, basically, they run into some demons. And... So Kaya, you may remember that Kaya doesn't really have any weapon on her. Right. Her dagger's broke. Yeah. And so she's just kind of dodging. Tyvar's fighting. He's doing his thing where he like... So Tyvar, he's dodging. He's doing his thing. He's kind of going... Hoo, 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 hoo. And Kaya, she's able to uh, avoid an attack from one of the demons. And she takes his harpoon. And it's super heavy. And she's like basically having to... Um, like she's working like through it. She makes it almost entirely a material, and then she throws it. And when she throws it, she makes it uh, go from weightless to having a ton of weight, which makes it basically go super fast because of momentum, because it was already going at a certain speed, got heavier, gained momentum as a result, and went straight through the demon's breastplate and out the other side. And the demon then dies. His mace, uh, the mace on his arm, is like stuck into the ground and everything. Weight controls one of her powers? Well, the thing is, when she, the way she does things, she turns things into basically ghost material, like incorporeal. Uh, so it had no weight. And so when she threw it, it was weightless at a very high speed. Then it suddenly had weight and was going at an even faster speed because of the weight. Because science. Okay. That, that's why. Because science. Not magic on that one. Um, I mean, the science or the magic does make it turn into ghost stuff. but. Uh... Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, it's always, it's always, it always comes down to magic. Um, Magic's a catalyst. Yes. And so uh, while that's happening, Tyvar is still doing his fight against another demon. She's fighting another demon. And this one, she faces her hand. She's going to reach in and punch through his heart. That's her plan. She's going to phase her maker so that her hand phases through his chest, into his heart, punches through it, and then she phases back out. Simple, simple idea, right? She shoves her hand in, and then she realizes that when the moment her hand turns like in, like back into a real hand, that it's on fire because the inside of the demon is like a furnace. And so she pulls her hand out like real quick and is like, Why? Why are you <laughs> built like that? <laughs> and I mean. She, she basically stepped, shoved her hand inside of, inside of it, right? And so the fact that she still shoved her hand into his thing, though, is, is pretty good. And he falls to the ground, and he's got, like, blood coming out of his mouth because she did just punch him in the heart. Even if it did, it didn't do quite what she wanted. It made him, like, stumble, basically, right? And so what she did is she focuses on her pain. He had a little firewall around his heart. Yeah, pretty much. His entire body is just fire. And so she basically makes it so that the floor that the demon is on top of phases out. Since she couldn't kill him that way, she just phases out the ground and the guy's like, takes out his wings to try and get uh, do it, but he's too heavy and he just sinks and he hits the lava and he burns to death. Why does it being made of fire die in lava? It's not made of fire, it's just got fire inside. Kind of like how we have water inside of us, but we can still drown. Okay. I'll, I'll accept this. Science, once again. <laughs> <laughs> so much science and magic. Who knew? You know, some science is more of an art than a science. Um, so, basically, that all happens. Tyvar took care of his guy. And he's like, that thing was twice your size. <laughs> he goes, you know how many humans in all of the sagas I've known have slain a demon? Assuming you didn't talk things through with the other one, you bested two. And without a weapon, the scouts must hear about this. I'll tell them myself when we're finished. She's like, uh, thanks. <laughs> and so he's like, 
Oh, yes, you need weapons. I will get you weapons now. And so it says he, he, says he stooped over the massive hammer the demon jaw had dropped before he went into the magma. And she's like, I can't use that. He reaches in and he basically pulls, uh, he reaches into the iron of the hammerhead. And he just kind of like reaches into the metal, pulls out the like it's Play-Doh and he just pulls it out. And he starts like, he starts like kind of like just shaping it. Presses his hands together, he's squeezing and his like all his muscles and his and everything is just like getting really taut and like ripply and like glistening in the fiery lava glow. And like there's the sweat coming down his like his like from his forehead, like running down his, his neck to his chest. And like his fingers are just kind of like caressing the, the, the metal. You know what I'm talking about, right, Joe? Go on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, he makes like these two uh, hammerheads. He makes these, they're just perfectly crafted, single. Like each each of the two different chunks he ripped out are their own singular block of metal, but they're in it's an entire like axe. So she has these two hand axes now that are each of the, just like pure metal. Is that what she's holding in the inexorable? Yes. They're really cool looking. Yeah. And it's it's cool because he then says, um, he goes, she like after all that while he's doing it, he says, everything everything has the potential to grow. Trees, people, we expect it from them, but earth and stone too, given time and patience, or failing that, a bit of magic. I told you my abilities work differently in each realm I pass through. I figured in a place as lifeless as this, anything would be desperate to grow, even metal. And I was right. So. He explains that the whole thing is the trolls are basically earth, so he just turned them into boulders and they turn it into stone. But now she has these super cool solid metal axes. And then there's an entire demon longship. Uh, Wait, the, so he knows how to use his abilities, but he's not aware that it's alchemy, basically. Yeah, exactly. He just knows that the things that he works with, um, they bend to his will because it has to do with growth, the green side of things. Um which is cool because his card is elf based, obviously, but because of his power suite, you know, that future cards will most likely make more use of the yeah, fact now that he's had his introduction. Once we get him in a different plane as a fleshed out character, he'll be some kind of green alchemist. Exactly. Which uh, I could see that being something as simple as exiling a creature to make it uh, not exiling a creature. Uh, but rather, uh, like maybe destroying a non-creature permanent and, get, and turning it into a land or something like that. Kind of like mm -hmm. the the whole thing that um, uh, Song of the Dryads does, where he just turns things into other things. Usually, most likely, land. and it's stuff that's possible in green. He he's going to be a really cool character down the line. Yes, uh, he has a lot of potential. Um, but yeah, Kai and Tyvar then steal those demons. They they steal their longship, so that they can continue along their way, and so. They notice that there's a giant rip in the uh, in the ground. So Kayan and Tyvar, they're on this boat and they're kind of going through the lava. They're just doing their thing. And they they see a mountain that has the glow, the godly glow. And they're like, okay, that's where we got to go. And she's thinking, you know, I could just leave. I still don't have to do this. I don't have any reason to do this. If I caught him, I mean, no one's paying me, but maybe Chandra would because of how he treated her. Somebody's somebody's gonna want this this guy's horned head on a stake, I'm sure. So like, I mean, I might as well just keep going. And so they, as they're going along their way, they see an entire fleet of demon ships, a ton of them. And then they see that there's a giant rend in the ground that all of them are going towards. That the sword of the realms has torn a hole creating a doom scar and they're all going towards it at a at like they're just ready they're ready for war and so kaya tries to stop tibble and so tyvar and, and kaya they go and they, and, and they actually like they reach him they reach tibble he's on top of that mountain and he's throwing rock and fire down at them. Of course, Tyra just dodges. Kaya phases through them, fifteen feet, ten feet. Kaya's ready to go, and she's gonna, she's just gonna, she's gonna beat him. She lunges at him, and then he puffs 
smoke into her into her face and it stings her eyes it burns her throat she's blinded the axe is doing nothing and yeah, she's just like she's swinging wildly and she like tr- she just tries to get away right and the and the smoke is clinging to her with like it's magical of course and it's digging into her eyes and just burns it's just pain and she's there and she can't like she can't hear anything she's just it's all over the place and then she hears it's not too late it's not too late to run she then like the thought just kind of hit her she can still run it's done Tybalt started the doom scar already what are you still doing here you can't stop it the plane's problems aren't your problems you owe these people nothing go on jump to the blind eternities get out of here save yourself it's what you're best at after all and they just keep hitting her these 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 thoughts it'd be easy there's nothing for you here nothing but pain it's just pain and she's there and the smoke is just is just going around her and she's becoming exhausted she knows she could just leave and then she thought the voice sounds like hers but it wasn't quite just there was something off about it there was so much pain and then she's like, oh, yeah, I'm fighting a pain mage. <laughs> and so she's able to get like, like knock it off. And then she goes at Tibble and he's like, you couldn't just leave, could you? <laughs> and so basically everyone, they get back into this fight and it's going. There's no pain. Nothing's happening. And. Tybalt's and Tybalt and uh, Kai are just going at it against each other, but Tybalt gets the upper hand and he swings it over the sword. But of course, she is saved by this just this massive meaty bastion of a man, <laughs> like just literally the magic version of Adam Driver just shows up and he just <laughs> and Tyvar defends her and. He knocks the sword out of Tybalt's hand and he goes, I am Tyvar Kell, Prince of the Elves, greatest hero of Calderm. And it's like, yes, you are. <laughs> Second only to Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Tyvar gets hit directly in the face with the smoke. And he does not doubt. He does, like, he just goes through it. Like nothing, it doesn't cling to him. He just just walks it right off. It's because he didn't have a shirt. It just like hit him, and like the, his nipples just like like became fans, and just like the little little tassels knocked with smoke all the way. It was amazing, it was beautiful. So he was basically go through fighting Frieza. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I'm gonna deck you in the schnoz. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Are you Lord Timmy? Yes, I'm. I am Lord Tibbles. <laughs> I'm gonna deck you in the schnoz. That's a new one. Um, and says, but the thing is, he goes, "Now, fiend, you will tell us what you've done, and go see for yourself." And of course, he just he just planes walks away because he's Tibbles, <laughs> and then Tibble and Tybor's like, huh. I didn't think he would do that. <laughs> like he had him pinned down. He's like, I didn't think he was gonna do that. <laughs> it's like, well, he is a planeswalker. It's he planeswalked. It's a thing and, we can do. It's a thing you should be doing. And so Tyra's like, so did we win? We won, right? She's like, no, I, that, that's not what this is. That that's a doom scar, and he's gonna do this somewhere else. Yeah, and and, and the thing is, they look, and Kaya's is telling Tyvar, look. We have to go. Like this plane is going is ended. This this is going to be complete chaos. We can't do anything. We can planeswalk. We can leave. We can survive this. He's like, we need to stop them. <laughs> what are you talking about? And she's like, you're a great warrior, but the greatest war in history couldn't change what's about to happen. And the demons are already pouring into the Doom Scar. Varagoth right there, right on the front lines, ready to go in and reclaim Bredegard for his own. She's saying, we can go to the next plane. We can try to do better. He goes, so this is what your kind does. Disappear as soon as the world pitches a direction you don't care for. When she somewhere as... just feels it, just like, ah! Oh! 
<laughs> and he tells her, you and that Tybalt aren't so different in the end. And with that, he goes through the door, a doorway. We're using because he has the sword. And he cuts his way in, and he goes through. And she's like, she was ready to planeswalk. Like she had already like summoned all the power and everything. She was like, okay, I'm sold. And she goes to the door with him to try and save Caltain. And that is how this episode ends. For I love on- it. There's only one episode left. The conclusion. Really? Yes. No, it can't be over already. Exactly. So we're going to see the such a good series. It is. It is. It's been great. I've been, I've loved it. I've loved, I love this story so much because it, a lot of the pitfalls of Zendikar, I guess you could say were answered in this one. Uh, I'll, we'll talk more about that after the last episode. Sounds good. Don't miss it, guys. You don't want to miss this awesome conclusion coming for Caltame. Go ahead and leave a like if you liked the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you didn't like the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you had breakfast this morning. Go ahead and leave a like if you ate anything this morning. If you didn't have anything, please go eat something and then come rewatch the video and leave a like. Uh, food is important. And go ahead and subscribe. And I will, I guess, go over the food groups. Or we'll listen to more Caltame. Likely the second one. Bye, guys.